last video for tonight, tonight is Friday, for sound waves. I, had, I ran into a little bit of trouble with my uh, videos, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be gone Saturday, Sunday. I will be making the, I think there's probably two more videos for each class. Um, I'll be making those other ones on uh, Monday, which is fine, because I mean, you know, you don't have that much to watch right now. You got a little bit if, you, if you're bored or you just want to get a head start on it. It shouldn't take you too long to watch now, get the notes written down, do some, uh, do some of the homework, um, and then maybe Monday or Tuesday you take a look at the other ones, okay? Not too big a deal. Sound waves. All right, sound waves. Uh, this, a lot of this is uh, probably a good chunk of this. Maybe a third is going to be review. Um, sound waves, lo uh, are they transverse or are they longitudinal? Turns out they are longitudinal. Today's the day we're spending talking almost entirely, uh, we're spending a whole day on sound waves. Well, this would be a whole day in class. They are longitudinal. Therefore, they need some material in order to uh, exist. They need to move through some medium, some material. They cannot move through a vacuum in order to move, or the fancy physics term for move is propagate. Okay, propagate. Sound waves are caused. I'm going to go to a picture first to show you. Um, here's a good little animation I just found tonight on sound waves. Okay? This is kind of like what sound waves look like if you could see all the individual air particles. You can see, okay, you can kind of see that there's some general shift going on towards the right hand side, okay? But if you look, we know these are longitudinal because all the particles are moving parallel to the direction that the wave is moving in, okay? Here's like a crest of a wave. It's moving in this direction, okay? We can see some compression. We can see some rarefaction. Some con um, that means the spreading out. Um, but you see the particles don't actually move all the way with the wave. They just kind of pass the wave along. So um, the way sound waves work, the reason we call it, these are uh, they're pressure waves, okay? These are regions of high pressure right here. In the middle, that's regions of low pressure, and the particles kind of get jostled back and forth from high pressure to low pressure, and that's how the wave ends up propagating. So if we want to draw our own picture of this, we can do so by making lots of little dots on here, okay? Um, we know that they are caused by pressure variations in the air. Pressure variations in air. Air with high pressure. denser, and that is where we say that there is a condensation, not condensation like rain, of course, and then air with lower pressure, that says pressure by the way, sorry, my bad writing, air with lower pressure, or in other words, air that is less dense. being rarefied. That is rarefaction. Okay. So if you want to draw a picture of this, isn't this great you get to watch me do this on video? Technology, oh my gosh, 2019, what a year. I don't even know if this shows up on video. <laughs> see it from here. Let me move back. Let me see if I can see it from back there. Um, okay, yeah, I can definitely tell if there's regions that there are more dots or the regions that there are fewer dots. These regions right here, 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 here. These are your condensations, areas of high pressure. And then you've got this, this, this. These are rarefactions. And since 
this is a wave that involves air particles that are physically moving. Okay, they are moving back and forth. And that means that we can call this a mechanical wave. That is known as a mechanical wave. If the part, if something is actually moving back and forth, that is a mechanical wave. All right, that wasted way too much time. Let's erase my beautiful drawing. Uh, at STP, remember we mentioned this uh, a little while ago. Um, STP is the fancy chemistry term that means standard temperature and pressure. You do not need to know what standard, what the standard temperature and pressure are, but just in case you forgot, that is what it means. Okay. Um, at standard temperature and pressure, sound waves travel, this is look upable in the reference tables, with a speed of 331 meters per second, okay, when they are traveling through air. Now, taking a look at this graph down here, hopefully you can see it, okay, there's a graph, the line goes approximately like, okay, it's straight, but it goes like that. Um, and the axis down here, I should have scrolled down, I'm kind of stupid, uh, is a temperature axis, okay, higher temperature over there. Higher temperature leads to higher um, speed of sound, okay? Speed increases when the temperature increases. Generally a good thing to know. Um, we, at standard, temperature is zero degrees Celsius, okay? Which, this room is not zero degrees Celsius right now. You do not experience zero degrees Celsius except between the months of about November to April. Sound speed at room temp is about 346 meters per second, in case you wanted to know. So, sound actually moves faster in a room, like let's say it's, it's winter, okay? Sound will actually move faster inside your house than outside your house, because hopefully it is warmer inside your house than outside your house, and sound moves faster when uh, the air is warmer. Another way that the speed of sound can increase, it typically, well, here's a table that shows a whole bunch of different materials, okay? Shows the material, shows their density, and then it shows the speed. And if you had time to look through this, you would see that in general, it's not a perfect relationship, okay? I want you to write that down. Not a perfect relationship, but it's good enough for us. In general, the denser the material, the faster sound will move through it. So therefore, sound usually travels faster in uh, solids and liquids. Such as steel and water, than it does in air. Okay? And in water, I think it's right on this table, it's in here somewhere. Yeah, water, speed of sound is 1,496. For air, at STP, 331. Water tra uh, sound travels like five times faster in water. Now, the reason you still can't hear anyone underwater, it gets, well, I mean, you can hear something, but it gets all distorted because of all the water kind of moving around. Air doesn't do that as much, okay? But the sound does travel faster in water. Here's some more review stuff. The amplitude of a sound wave is related to its volume. Okay, and it's also kind of related to the energy that it carries. The louder the sound, the more energetic it is. The frequency, on the other hand, is related to the pitch or the notes, okay, how high or low the sound is. The relationship between, I know I'm moving fast, a sound wave's velocity, frequency, and wavelength is one of our favorites, V equals F lambda. Okay, V equals F lambda. Been using that a little bit. Now we've got to differentiate between sound waves in the same medium that are traveling in, let's say, just air, and then later on we'll talk about sound waves that go from air to water, or water to air, or air to glass, or whatever. We'll talk about sound waves that change media, because this is important, you need to be able to make this distinction. Sound waves in the same medium, we talked about this like the first day of waves. If a wave is in the same, or stays in the same material, it will always have the same speed. All waves in that material have the same speed. Which means, if the speed has to stay the same, if f goes up, the wavelength goes down. That means that the frequency and wavelength are inversely related for something like this. They're inversely related 
for an uh, for a wave, a sound wave, in which it doesn't um, the wave does not travel from one media to another. It stays in the same medium the entire time. Here's an example. Okay, decent amount of writing here, so write a little small. In air, at STP, if F equals 400, nope, 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 screwing it up, I'm sorry. If the wavelength is 1.2 meters, what is the frequency? Okay, we can solve that very easily. We use V equals F lambda. In air at STP, we know the speed of sound is 331 meters per second. Looking for F, lambda is 1.2 meters. And if you go to solve this, you will find the frequency is approximately 276 hertz. It's a pretty low tone, actually. All right? Now, what happens if wavelength is halved, but we still have the, uh, a wave traveling through air at STP? Well, we have the same velocity, so we pull out our equation again, V equals F lambda. We still have 331 meters per second equals, well, let's see. Uh, if lambda is halved, that means it would be 0 0.6 meters. Turns out that F is 552 hertz. In other words, take a look at what happened. The frequency, or the, the wavelength halved, the wavelength got cut in half. What's the relationship between this? The frequency actually doubled. Okay, so they are inversely related. Okay, but please note, if the wave remains in the same medium, the speed has to be the same. That is crucially, crucially important. You need to know that. You need to know whether a wave is going from one medium to the next or is always in the same medium, same material. Because if it changes materials, if one wave, if a wave goes from one medium to the next, Speed does not stay the same. Speed changes. What is the same is the frequency. If you create a sound wave and it goes from one material to the next, the frequency will stay the same. You cause the air to have a certain pattern of vibrations. It's not going to change that pattern, okay? It's still going to go through so many cycles per second, but the speed is not going to change, or the speed is going to change, and that means that based on V equals F lambda, if F stays the same and V changes, guess what? The wavelength must have changed. Okay, so, our example this time. In air, at STP. If F is 480 hertz, what is lambda? We practice V equals F lambda, 331 meters per second, 480 hertz. The wavelength in this case, you can calculate it for yourself, is 0 0.69 meters. Now, if wave enters water, Remember, in water, the speed is different. It's much faster. It's almost five times as fast. 1496 meters per second. What is lambda? So you can kind of think about this, okay? The wave moves faster. In other words, the waves go... So in air, the wave's going along, but it's got a pretty small wavelength. If you want to make the wave go faster, but the frequency has to stay the same... That means the wavelength has to be much bigger, okay? The wave has to cover more meters per second, so the wavelength has to get bigger. The frequency is going to stay the same. Let's see if that works out. 1496 meters per second. Frequency stays the same. I'll put that in parentheses. F stays the same. Okay, because this is one wave, you can't change the frequency of a wave once it's already created. We solve for lambda, and indeed we get a lambda of 3.12 meters. The wavelength did get bigger, okay? The 
frequency remain the same. Frequency is how many cycles per second. This is like the, uh, the wave as it's in air. It's not moving very fast. It's a sound wave. Once it hits water, the speed increases because the wavelength increases. Okay? Speed increases because the wavelength increases. The frequency must stay the same. You need to know the difference between this example and the example I just gave a minute ago. Now, second to last topic for sound waves, and talk about resonance. We did briefly talk about resonance the other day um, in the interference notes, but we're going to give more examples now. The idea behind resonance is this. You get one vibrating object, and that vibrating object makes another Another. I mean, my writing is just deteriorating. Another object vibrates if. So you get one object that vibrates. It will cause vibrations in other objects if the vibrations, the original ones, are at the second object's 